guys, this is Tahura and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about reading <laughs> reading Palestine's first book of the month that was A Woman Is No Man But A Ta From. I mean, technically the first book was uh, The Ethnic Lens of Cleansing of Palestine but I felt sick and well the rest is history. thing first, uh, was it a Palestinian representation? Yes, but it is based in America. So if you're expecting to go into the book to know what the current situation looks like, uh, that's not what you're gonna get. But what you're gonna get is three lives of Palestinian women struggling in America trying to find their identity. Not as an American or Palestinian, but as a woman in the society. And they're going about their lives trying to see what their place in the society is as a Muslim woman in their household as well as it talks about standing up uh, for your rights and stuff like that first i want to thank all the few guys who actually joined me for the read along of this book and all the thoughts that you shared with me so to those who actually managed to make it to the club thank you so much if you guys can see i have actually marked a lot of things and annotated a lot of things specifically towards the starting of the book uh, it's not that it just it gets boring towards the end but there are some things that you know um struck me as well we'll uh, talk about it you have to give it to the author that she have this amazing story building skills and uh, there were three perspectives uh, in the book the grandma the daughter-in-law and the granddaughter and wow i just want to say the way she pulled all the parallels between uh, the three lives there's this one uh, part where she talks about one character looking at the carpet and just analyzing her life and uh, her decisions and what is going on in her life and she does this uh, like the author does this with all of the three characters and i just love those parallels so much one thing that i was grateful for was uh, the fact that in the book it uh, there's one paragraph where uh, the author kind of makes it clear that this is not the islamic representation now there's this thing called islamic versus muslim representation if you want to know more about it you can check out my previous video and i won't speak much on it at the moment but apart from that i have marked a lot of things in the book and i'm really excited to talk to you about it because oh my goodness uh, first thing first the writing of Atafram I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing her name right but um, the writing of the author was just way too good I really loved it and um, it was haunting the scary part but also the part that I really loved about the book was I could see so much of myself in it like in different things happening the way the characters dealt with it and like there's PT <laughs> There's post post stress post I forgot PTSD P post traumatic stress disorder yes uh, there's a hint of post traumatic stress disorder if I'm not wrong there's depression oh content warning not exactly content warning but like remarks about what are the things included in it I would say uh, depression domestic violence it's not clearly mentioned but i would say it is post uh, stress post traumatic stress disorder as well oh then there's murder what i loved about the characters is i could relate uh, the way one of the characters love to read actually two of the characters love to read actually three <laughs> wait i need to make up my mind there are a lot of characters that love to read and uh, they, uh, how they use books as an escape or maybe to find answers to their life kind of spoke a lot to me and Itafram's writing was just chef kisses let's talk about why we had actually picked this book up uh, for the Palestinian club uh, because of course it is by a Palestinian but um, how much does it shed light on Palestinian uh, situation on a scale of 1 to 10 I would say it hardly does 3.5 or 4 uh, there is this one part where uh, one of the characters talk about living in camps and how they fought hard to survive and they had to leave their homes and how much they wish to go home but they just couldn't and they have stopped even you know hoping to ever go back because it is chaos over there you cannot live freely you're living under the rule of um, Israelis you have no free will or any freedom or to do whatsoever you wish to 
Talking about freedom, there's this really good part where uh, one of the characters is getting married and uh, the person she's getting married to uh, apparently have American visa even though he is Palestinian but they had once you know as a refugees they went to America and they eventually built their life over there so Isra gets married uh, to this guy who has an American passport and for the first time in her life she gets to go in the compound of Alexa and um, I just loved the fact that the author mentioned that because it shows how uh, they could get into the compound of Alexa even though the main character Isra lived all her life in Palestine but she couldn't go or pass through Jerusalem and get into the compounds of Alexa or visit uh, the mosque because well uh, that's how they live uh, they cannot roam freely in their own country but just because her husband had an American passport now for the first time in her life after she gets married they get to go over there and it just sheds a very if not much just a very very tiny light on the situation over there how like the people who do not even belong there can go anywhere in Palestine but the people the indigenous people they are restricted to certain areas Overall, the book talked more about uh, what it means being a woman in a misogynistic culture uh, where it's like driven by patriarchy. How even the women, uh, they always teach their children, they teach their daughters to be submissive, to not have a lot of dreams. I wish there was this one character who actually followed Islam properly and, uh, you know, told the readers that whatever these people are doing is not a part of Islam at all like yes um, the author does talk about it but just for like a para and it's a ma'am it's a book of like three 40 pages approximately and I wish there were more characters talked about more how this was not Islam or this was not Palestinian culture uh, and this was misogyny that is inbuilt in the culture a lot of a lot of cultures not just Arab or Desi but also the Western culture now I'll be very honest um, I don't know how much it does good when it comes to the Palestinian representation because it got me thinking what does this book bring to the table other than the same narrative that the Western culture loves to accept so we have oppressed women uh, a husband that beats his wife a husband uh, that a father who beats his daughters, people who do not want daughters, and so on. Basically, misogyny. Now, I do agree that there is a lot of misogyny and a lot of patriarchy in this world that needs to be called out. But I just hope that when people read this book, they do not generalize the Palestinians or the Arab world or Muslims in general that oh look they are the beard uh, woman beating people one thing that is clear to me after this whole Afghanistan thing happened in the last week is that people love to villainize the brown men Arab in this case but really it's the same thing to them when they do not look like them at all I would not want uh, a non-muslim to pick this book up uh, for their reference to Muslim culture there are some books that have good plots but the writing is so bad that I just want to like not read it anymore. So writing is very important to me and for that this book did an amazing job. Talking about Islam and Muslim and uh, you know uh, cultural representation, there are other books that did not include Islam, have portrayed uh, the misogynistic culture or whatever cultural problems in that particular society and still managed to have a good representation at the end of the day and one such book was Amal Unbound by Aisha Saeed and uh, while I'm at it I mean read love from A to Z because this is the best Muslim representation book you'll ever get out there anyway but this was about Palestine and I think uh, even though I did not get what I wanted from the book um, it did give me a slight insight on how hard the life of uh, refugees are or the people living at the borders and are trying to you know just have a good life for uh, their family the author have talked about removing the hijab and it's like almost like she's comparing it to freedom or like liberty and i do not understand that like what is 
this obsession with uh, saving uh, the women of the East like what is this that you know they need to look like us they need to remove the hijab that is the only way they can be liberated but thankfully it, it did not exactly revolve around that concept to sum it all up I do not regret reading this book at all and I don't think I ever will because um, there was something that uh, was troubling me a lot in the past few days and not past few days for years but uh, I got the answer to it in this book like I would not talk about it because it's very personal big but so yeah I, I'm kind of like being biased just because it pulled that first click cord you know our next book in uh, this series of reading Palestine would be the beauty of your face by Sahar Mustafa so if you want to join me uh, maybe you can DM me on Instagram we can all read it together from what I've heard it's better than this book so hopefully let's see uh, what we find out in this book apart from that I'm uh, thinking of reading uh, I'm a book based on Afghanistan uh, which actually truly like you know shows anything different than the kite runner does which i haven't read and i'm just thinking why shouldn't i just read it just to critique it you know uh because i my brother i had given him to read and uh, from what he said and from the, what the world is saying i don't think so it is it should be talked about <laughs> i mean this is the book you need to put it in the grave but anyway that's it for this video i have uh, a lot of videos lined up for you guys if you haven't subscribed already please subscribe and do like this video and share it with your friends if you want to read something like a woman is no man i have uh, put down the description of the book in uh, the description box down below and to end it would i be recommending to end it would i be recommending it yes for the writing yes definitely but for the rep uh, just be careful with the what you how you perceive the characters anyway that's it from me bye